we've just seen how parents who are true breeding for seed shape and seed color so uh, true breeding dominant and true breeding recessive how the gametes that each parent can produce can be combined to then through fertilization uh, come up with offspring that are all heterozygous for seed shape and seed color. So what we've got here, let's let's take a look at that. <clears throat> So uh, the offspring, so parent one can produce gametes that have the allele for seed shape that are all dominant big R. And the allele, so two alleles because there's two characteristics, and the allele for uh, big Y for yellow seed color because that's dominant and then the gamete for parent two can produce um, so parent two can produce gametes that have all allele for wrinkled seeds which is little r and green seeds which is little y an offspring is heterozygous. So this offspring there, then the phenotype of this, this offspring is, what is it? It's round seeds and yellow seeds. And that's interesting, I'm using green. Um, yeah, so that's the phenotype. The genotype. This is the genotype. So what is the genotype? Let's write that again. Genotype is big R, little r, big Y, little y. That's the genotype. So now what happens when we uh, um, cross this F1 generation, so this is the first generation, when we cross the first generation with itself, so self-fertilize, what are we going to get? So let's take a look. Let's first try to figure out what kind of gametes each of these individuals are going to produce, and then we're going to put it, uh, all of those gametes into a Punnett square to try to figure out the offspring that they're going to end produce. So let's take a look. Let's let's go through this. So the gametes um, that we want. Okay, from this generation right here. Okay, let's let's do this. <clears throat> okay, so parent, both parents are gonna look alike. So let's go ahead and put parent. So it's gonna be one and two. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and so we've got two characteristics, two chromosomes. So let's put our chromosomes in here. One from mom and one from dad. And this is for seed shape. They put seed shape first. So let's go ahead and do seed shape. Right here, there's our allele for seed shape. And here is our allele for, actually, you know what, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. What I'd like to do um, is, let's go back, so to yellow. So seed shape, and then down here we're going to put seed color. So this is all for parent one. Okay, so let's do our... Oops, we need different um, 
I really want to make sure that they look different because it's just so much easier to see when they look different. Okay, different chromosome because now we're doing seed color. Okay. And now we put our alleles on here for seed color. I probably should have scooted it over a little bit so I had a little bit more room, but that's okay. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, what type of gametes can we have? So, for seed shape, we are going to have a big R allele, and we're going to have a little r allele. For seed color, we're going to have a big Y allele, and I just fit it in there, and then a little y allele. Okay, so what combination can we come up with uh, for gametes? So we can have a big R and that can go with a little y. Or that big R can go with a big Y. So, do you see what I'm doing here? So, you're going from a big R, you can go, let's do that in a different color. Let's go, so you can, you can combine those two chromosomes, or you can combine those two chromosomes. So big R, big Y, big R, little y. Or you can combine little r. I'd like to go back and keep, keep track of this. So you can have, there we go. Little r can go with big Y and little r can go with little y. So go up to brown. So little r can go with big Y and little r can go with little y. So there are our four chromosomes. And this is, so parent one can have, so, okay, um, let's make sure. So we're going to say that this is the dad. These are the gametes and they're the sperm and the gametes can have one allele for each characteristic so since there's two characteristics it has to have two alleles and the way that these are partitioned out is called independent assortment. So it depends on how these chromosomes can line up on the metaphase plate. So this is, um, I'm going to put this up here. So this is called independent assortment. And this is how independent assortment is determined by how the chromosomes line up, line up on the metaphase plate. Plate where? In meiosis one, meiosis one. So this is parent one right here that we just came up with, and parent two. Remember, they're going to self fertilize, so parent two is going to have exactly the same type of gametes. Okay, so let's see what that looks like in our. Punnett square. So here's our gametes. 
So for each, each individual, we've got, a, so each trait has its own allele. So big R, big Y, little r, big Y, big r, little y, little r, little y. So remember, these are all of our gametes on both axes. These are um, the eggs from mom, and these are the sperm from dad. Okay, so what offspring can we then, can these two individuals then come up with from all of these different types of gametes? And it's all probability, which one is going to combine with which. But if you have a, a large enough sample size, then you are going to get a specific ratio um, because of the probability. Um, okay, so if you combine a big R, big Y with a big R, big Y, you are going to get an individual with the genotype, big R, big R, big Y, big Y, and you're going to get the phenotype of round yellow seeds because round is dominant and yellow is dominant. And so how many of them uh, are you going to get that are round and yellow? And you're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're going to get nine yellow round. How many are you going to get that are wrinkled and yellow? You're going to get one, two, three wrinkled yellow. How many wrinkled, let's see, um, how many green round are you going to get? One, two, three. And then how many green wrinkled? So when you combine these gametes in fertilization to come up with these offspring, this is the ratio you're going to get. And if you just um, if you just had what is it, 16 offspring, you're not likely to get this ratio. But if you have a hundred offspring, you are likely to get, <clears throat> let's see, um, I gotta think about this a little bit more. Um, so, uh, so it's 16, um, let's say uh, you are likely to get the ratio of nine to three to three to one. And if you were to get, um, you would probably get something close to that. If you were to get a thousand offspring, you're going to get something even closer to nine to three to three to one. So the bigger your sample size, the closer you are going to, you're going to get to that ratio right there. Okay. So two things important to remember is independent assortment and the law of segregation, and that's Mendelian genetics. So I hope you found that interesting. Think about if you were then to um, have seven characteristics, what that genotype is going to look like. So you're going to have um, you're going to have lots of letters. You're, you're not just going to have two alleles per trait. You're going to have seven. So that would be a huge genotype. Okay. Hope you found that interesting.